Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of Tutorial Grid. Now on this tutorial, we're going to teach you how to remove logos and things from t-shirts on a slider shot. So the slider shot is basically the camera's on a, a rig that it's a slider, so it slides across, you get like a little foreground element, you've got some background elements, and then you have your main elements. Now, unfortunately in this shot, uh, this was for a product ad and uh, we can't show this logo. <laughs> if everybody knows that is a, uh, that's the Nike logo and it's right in the front and he didn't have anything to change into. So we have that right in our video and we're going to take that out as easily as possible and quickly as possible. But first, before we get on into it, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Go ahead and click that like button and share this video because uh, we're going to uh, be going over some really quick techniques to get this thing out. Also check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash slash Avid Productions 479. Give us a like there and check me out at CherokeeTurner.com and subscribe to that blog and uh, you can uh, read all about uh, what I do on the daily day as well as there's a vlog there. You can check that out. Vlog blog. I call it the vlog blog. So you can check that out. I do a, a vlog and you can keep to date on all the stuff that I'm doing. Uh, also my new channel. So let's go ahead and jump into it, shall we? So the shot that we've got looks like this. It's just a little slider shot. And uh, we need to take out this big old logo here. It's it's not even a second shot, but it is very imperative that I take this logo out of there because we are not promoting Nike. We are promoting another uh, company. So we need to take that out in our ad because it's very, very, very important. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this on over into After Effects. So I've got my shot here. I'm going to go ahead and right click on that. I'm going to replace with After Effects Composition. What our After Effects Composition looks like on the end looks like this. We've got our slider shot, everything is colored, everything looks good, and the emblem is gone. All right, tutorial done, right? No, no, it is not done. Let's go over how we did this. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Layer, New, Null Object. We're gonna put that Null Object right there. Now we're gonna select our layer that we want to track. We're gonna go over here to our Tracker Control. Now you need to make that Null Layer before we hit the Tracker Control or else there's another couple of things to do. So make sure to have that Null Object before we click anything in our Tracker Layer. If you don't have the Tracker Layer already selected, and up, go ahead and go to Window, go to Tracker. Make that tracker uh, tracker come to life. We've got everything we need. Go ahead and click the layer that we want to track and we're going to go to track motion. And that's gonna bring up our motion tracker assist. We're gonna bring that on down to uh, where um, probably the closest trackable object to our logo. Now we could track just the logo, but that would take an extremely long time to track. This is 4K footage, 4K raw red footage. So that's gonna take a long time for me to track something that big. So really you just need to find an object that is close enough to that logo or close enough to the thing that you're trying to take out of your footage that doesn't move uh, along with the logo. So what I have here is this little point in A. So I'm gonna go ahead and track this little part and I'm going to get a little bit of this T right here just in case it decides to move or decides to rotate. Uh, it'll be able to compensate for that and we'll have that tracking information down. All right, after we found our tracking point and we've got that ready and set up, make sure this says null to to put the, on the uh, motion target and we're gonna go ahead and click our play button here. Make sure to have your uh, CTI all the way at the very beginning of the, of the um, footage. We're gonna go ahead and track this sucker. All right, let's track it. All right, we've got our footage tracked. It's very nice, very clean. If you want, you can go through this and make sure that that tracker stayed steady. Looks like it did a really good job there. Cool, put our CTI right back at the very beginning and we're gonna go ahead and hit apply. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure that says X and Y, not X only or Y only, X and Y. If you do just do the X, it'll do this line. If you just do the Y, it'll do that line. We want both. So we'll do X and Y, hit okay. All right, that brings up our tracking data where we should be, uh should be real good to go. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually gonna have to create a clean plate for this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select our background copy here, make sure our CTI is all the way to, uh, to the shot where our logo or whatever we're trying to remove is completely visible and does not get overrun by anything that's in our scene. So this is a really easy shot. So it's just right here. Nothing goes in front of it and nothing goes behind it. Real easy to take out. So I'm gonna go ahead and select our layer here. I'm gonna to go to composition, save frame as, file. And instead of Photoshop, I like doing a TIFF 
uh, or a JPEG. Me, I like doing TIFF for this type of footage, simply for the fact that it's red footage and it's very high bit depth. So I wanna make sure to keep that information. You can use JPEG, but I use it on your own discretion. Uh, I just like to have the highest quality file that's gonna closely match our file here as possible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use a TIFF. So the next thing I wanna do, I wanna go ahead and name this. This is going to be our, we'll just call it our dirty file. Hit save. All right, go ahead and hit render. Let's go on into Photoshop. Select a dirty file there. All right, now we're gonna use a couple of different tools in Photoshop that is uh, gonna take this sucker out. So the first thing that I personally like to do is I like to use the healing brush tool. Uh, so I'm gonna be using the healing brush tool the clone stamp tool and the spot remove tool. Uh, reason why is because the pixels work with them differently and it gives an overall better result. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the healing brush and you'll see exactly why I'm using it this way. It's gonna seem really strange why I'm doing this and you're gonna think, oh my God, this is like the worst result in the world. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this check mark real quick and you're probably thinking, what the heck is he doing? Um, I'm making something awesome is what I'm doing. Uh, there might be an easier way to do it. Uh, this is the way I like to do it. just because I like the result that it gives. Um, do this real quick. If you know how to use Photoshop better than I do, please use any way that you like to use or whatever you're comfortable with. Um, use that. All right. So now we're done. We've got our clean plate. Ha huh, kidding. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's try to get rid of some of the stuff with our spot healing brush tool. So this doesn't use pixels. Uh, so just go ahead and heal over this that we just did here. See, that's giving a really good result. Um, Take that out right there. Now this is usually, if there's a big blob like this where there's a bunch of stuff right next to it, this is where I bring out my clone stamp tool. So go ahead and select my clone stamp tool. Uh, we'll start selecting some stuff over here to stamp this out with. All right, and we did our clone stamp. So that's looking pretty good, but I can still see where uh, we uh, kind of remove some stuff. Make that a little bigger. And let's just go ahead and clean this up. Just a snadge right there. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna have it save this file, save as, call this dirty, we'll call it clean. And save that file. And no compression, just leave it as it is. Should be pretty good. All right, go ahead and go back into After Effects here. Go back to our composition. So we'll go ahead and pull that back out down into it. So find your file, clean plate, and we'll go ahead and select clean, pull that down into our file system here, and go ahead and put this below our null object. All right, so all of a sudden, you we've got our logo removed. So that's looking pretty good right there. Check that out. Hey, yeah, you don't even know it was there. That's perfect. The good thing about this shot is this guy didn't move. So I was able to take that out real easy. So sometimes you might have a little harder harder time and you gotta like, you know, imitate, imitate wrinkles and stuff. That's gonna be a completely new tutorial. So <laughs> there's there's gonna be a lot of spot removing tutorials here. So let's go ahead and get on into this. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit P for position on our clean plate, P for position on our null object. And then we're also gonna hit alternate. So hold down alternate and click on position of our clean plate. Boom. It's gonna bring up our pick whip options. Hit pick whip and push that and uh, pick whip our position on our null object and click out. So basically what that does is it pick whips our items together and uh, we should be good to go. I'm gonna turn off the audio just because I don't wanna listen to it. Okay, so the next thing you're probably wondering is, oh, Cherokee, look at this. We've got our footage on two separate uh, planes here. It looks like crap. How are we gonna fix that? All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and fix that. Go ahead and use our drop downs right here. So notice there is a number right here on position under our null object. That is our absolute position. And this is where our absolute position is right here. So, so this position is always going to imitate the position of the very first position where our CTI starts. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to change our anchor point right here. So on our clean plate, we're gonna select 
our anchor point X position and we're gonna tie it to this position. So it says 1993.5. So we're just gonna go ahead and type that in 1993.5. That's gonna push that all the way back there. And we're gonna do the same with our Y, 1841, 1841. And boom, our clean plate is now selected right where we need it to be. You can go ahead and play that back. It's exactly where it needs to be. Whenever it moves over, you see that clean plate moving over and our background right here starts to show. That means our uh, absolute position for our clean plate is where it needs to be. So let's go ahead and push the on back to our very first position, select our clean plate layer and hit T. I like to do it this way and pull down our opacity to about 50%. Now that logo appears right back. Select your pencil and let's go ahead and move and uh, take our pencil and just make a mask around our logo or our object they're wanting to take out. Looking good. So we wanna make sure that this is at an additive later. So select M on our clean plate. That is on add. So go ahead and hit T again and push our opacity back up. So now we have our logo completely out, but if you select out of this, you're probably gonna see a few lines. Now I don't, see too many lines, but I want to go ahead and do this anyway, just for good measure. That way I know my back is covered just in case anything does arise. So let's go ahead and hit F for feather on our clean plate. Let's push our pixels up to about 10. Now you're probably not going to notice a big difference, but it is noticeable to the client uh, just in case something does arise and uh, that layer does move around a little bit. So let's go ahead and play this back. Our footage looks real good. And that's how you do it. So what we have done, we have taken our logo, took it out, took it into Photoshop, changed it, and we, uh, we fixed it for our shirt. So guys, thank you very much for uh, checking out this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Also check us out at uh, Facebook at facebook.com slash AverProductions479 and on my website at CherokeeTurner.com. Check out the vlog blog and uh, all the other cool tutorials that I've got going on. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys later.